Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in, in support of this uh, bill. Um, Mr. Speaker, um, back in November 2021, uh, the, then, the then Liberal government, state government, passed its Motor Vehicles Electric Vehicles Levy Amendment Bill. That act introduced a levy on electric vehicles and a requirement for the Legislative Council to appoint a select committee into electric vehicles. The levy uh, was based on a distance-based charge for electric vehicles as an addition to, for the registration of an electric vehicle. Uh, the levy also was to commence in July, uh, on, or, sorry, on or earlier than 1st of July 2027, or when battery uh, electric vehicle sales reached 30 per cent of the total new motor vehicle sales in South Australia. From the, the commencement of that levy, Electric vehicles owners would have been charged two cents per kilometre travelled in a plug-in hybrid motor vehicle or 2.5 cents per kilometre for any other electric vehicle. It has been uh, calculated, uh, Mr Speaker, that um, by distance travelled each year and billed as part of the motor vehicle, sorry, uh, it is calculated that uh, by distance travelled each year uh, the charge will be levied as part of the vehicle registration process. The former Liberal government uh, estimated that this new tax would raise $1 million each year. It's not clear, uh, based on the discussions in this chamber, how that $1 million figure was uh, estimated and also, more importantly, what the cost to the industry would be of having this uh, $1 million tax revenue. The former Liberal government also advertised the state, state tax as a <coughs> substitute for fuel excise, which is a fed federal tax. It's not a like-for-like -like tax, it's actually a new tax. <clears throat> Fuel excise will come under pressure as more uh, electric vehicles come onto our roads. However, addressing this should be led by the Commonwealth Government. And also, given the, the price of petrol these days, the last thing we want to do is actually increase uh, fuel excise, which is also creating a huge burden on consumers today and one of the major, <clears throat> one of the major factors behind our inflation at the moment and the impact of having on our economy and the well-being of our community. Mr. Mr Speaker, the, the former state Liberal government saw the failure of their coalition counterparts to put together any policy to address this emerging issue as an opportunity to uh, implement their own tax. That tax, uh, a tax that would have seen raised funds in any manner that the state government uh, in decided um, and not on actually investing in this new technology. Mr Speaker, um, there was also part of that bill meant to be a select committee established in the upper house. And as a result, if this bill was passed, that committee will, will no longer be required uh, and therefore um, also the, the bill the repeal was, uh, removes the requirement for the select committee and, a, and this government, our government, will contribute to Australia's first national electric uh, vehicle strategy now to be led by Federal Minister Brown, Bowen. Sorry. Mr Speaker, uh, South Australian uh, Labor's proposal to repeal the bill, which is before us today, uh, will repeals both the electric vehicle levy and the requirement for such a committee, abolishes the levy uh, which will deliver on a government election commitment. And Mr, Mr. Speaker, it's very important that, uh, and as has been said by, uh, by people by across the chamber, is that uh, honouring election commitments are very important. Uh, and that uh, we, we, have, we, are, we are doing so in this case, as we have done so on a numerous number of other projects which have been uh, placed in our community through infrastructure projects, but also a number of other projects we actually are delivering on. Mr Speaker, a survey undertaken uh, during 2021 by the Australian Institute uh, indicated that seven in 10 South Australians would be less likely to purchase an electric vehicle if a road user charge was, were to be introduced. Importantly, Mr Speaker, this tax, had, had that been going ahead, um, would have actually been an impediment or barrier to take up electric vehicle purchasing. Apart from the cost itself, uh, it also added additional cost on an ongoing basis. So it would actually introduce a disincentive in a policy area which I think we want to in incentivise. That is certainly the view of the community, uh, certainly the view of, if you look at current um, community opinion about the way we should be doing what we should be doing to reduce emissions and a whole range of things about climate change. Certainly, our community supports changes which actually uh, reduces emissions in our community. While the user charge was not designed to start uh, for some time, 
passing this repeal bill is very important because it provides certainty for those to look into purchase an electric vehicle. And I wish to highlight that point, Mr Speaker, what's very important. The reason we've had um, some lag in this nation because of moving towards a more uh, less uh, fuel emissions and, and also supporting more uh, policies to support climate change is that we've had policies which are inconsistent at both the state and federal levels, which doesn't send the appropriate consistent signals to the marketplace. As some speakers already indicated, Mr Speaker, for, people to, for business to invest in a particular industry or product, they need to know that the investment environment is, is going to be supportive of what they're investing in. By having this sort of policy where you chop and change, particularly at the federal level under the Morrison government, um, is that they were sending out mixed messages, therefore businesses weren't investing in renewables and other industries like they should have been, and actually, actually investing in the future. Uh, where, where other nations have been doing so, particularly the European countries, have been sending out very strong in, um, signals about where people should be investing in the future. Mr Speaker, uh, it, is, it is somewhat uh, of um, an omission. Um, it's also somewhat sad that for nine years of federal Liberal government policy in this area that we actually are now behind the eight ball in a whole range of climate change areas. And Mr Speaker, this, what this bill does makes it very clear about we actually want to incentivise the electric vehicle industry. It sends a very clear message to businesses that it is okay to invest because businesses will get a return investment. And more importantly, uh, we actually will, will drive innovation, hopefully, in this country on how to improve electric vehicles and also reduce their price because the upfront price is, at the moment, a barrier to people purchasing those. Mr Speaker, uh, I think it's very important that uh, and I think some other speakers mentioned this already, is that unless we do support this bill and give a clear and consistent message to the marketplace, uh, Australia will become the dumping ground of a, mar of, a, of a secondary market. Rather than being a market leader, we'll actually we'll follow those, those vehicles which are less, uh, less innovative, less productive uh, in this country. So I think, given that our state I think I can say with some confidence, has led the world in renewable energies, uh, that we should also be very clear that our state is very supportive of making sure that we have more electric vehicles on the roads. Uh, Mr Speaker, it's also very important that now we have a federal Labor government which also sees the merit of this and federal government policy supports this. Um, Mr Speaker, our, the federal counterparts have set a low emissions vehicle target for the Commonwealth fleet of 75 per cent of new leases and purchases by 2025. So the, the federal government itself is actually making it very clear where its future investment will be and also made it very clear to the marketplace where they should be actually investing in the future as well. Commonwealth Labor has already made electric vehicles cheaper through the removal of fringe benefits tax and the 5 per cent import tariff for eligible electric vehicles. Uh, the fringe benefits tax changes means that a $50,000 electric vehicle will now be up to $4,700 cheaper uh, and, which, and for someone using a salary sacrifice arrangement. An employer could also save $9,000 a year, an, in, an incentive that is critical for fleet buyers and in turn the second-hand market. During a National Electric Vehicle Summit in August, uh, Mr Speaker, the Commonwealth Government announced its commitment to develop Australia's first National Electric Vehicle Strategy and South Australian, the South Australian Government has been invited to be part of that development process and is strongly supportive of the federally led approach in addition to our state-based support and initiatives. Mr Speaker, the, the electric vehicle strategy will be the roadmap to achieve the following goals. Make electric vehicles more affordable, drive more choice in the marketplace, drive e e electric vehicle uptake, reduce emissions, save, us, uh, save money on fuel, which is actually a major concern at the moment, and ensure we're taking advantage of local manufacturing opportunities. Very importantly, Mr Speaker, as I said earlier, it is sending a quite a strong and clear message to the marketplace that the electric vehicles are way of the future. 
And I think, if I recall correctly, my colleagues can correct me, it was only a few election or two ago that um, Mr Morrison, the former Prime Minister, was saying that the electric vehicles would be the end of the weekend. Uh, because how could you actually have electric vehicles on weekends and all, of our, all the weekend type vehicles? Well, A, it was proven wrong, uh, and it was clearly, it was clearly not, not in line with where the community was at because he's no longer the Prime Minister. But sadly, he did set this country back uh, almost a decade on a whole range of policies, and this being one of those. Uh, not the only one, though. There's a range of other policy areas where he set back the nation 10 years. Uh, while Australia doesn't show lead, uh, while, while Australia didn't show leadership, uh, um, it meant consumers weren't getting that choice in this country either, because uh, it, it, people weren't investing in that area. Some of the barriers, Mr. Speaker, to um, the slow electric vehicle uptake. Uh, there's sadly a smaller number of vehicles available in this country than other countries because of the inconsistent message given by both state and federal Liberal governments. High upfront purchase prices. I think as innovation drives improvements in those vehicles, as we see in other areas, price will fall. Uh, and also anxiety about electric vehicle range. I must confess, Mr Speaker, that's one of my concerns, is it to make sure that I'm fully charged where I am going. Uh, and it, um, so, but there is a rollout of charging stations right across the, the, the state, and I know which is supported by both the RA and other, uh, other companies, and we're also doing, uh, undertaking a trial to improve that. But I think we still have some way to go in improving the community's um, acceptance that will be safe to actually charge across the state. Having said that, Mr Speaker, any, you know, um, any policy like that um, would only be supported if we remove this tax, because we are, again, sending quite a clear uh, message. Uh, Mr Speaker, that uh, uh, on, on the charger, a number of councils actually have introduced uh, electric vehicle charging stations. I know my own council, the Gawler Council, um, have electric vehicle charging stations in the town near the tourism office, uh, and I'm aware that other councils are doing the same thing. I think um, electric vehicle charging stations are important from a tourism point of view. If you want people to come to your town, visit, then you actually provide the opportunity to be charged up. So um, the electric vehicle charging network, which the RIA is supporting, map shows, that, shows, that shows the towns where you'll be able to find charging stations, and they will be confirmed shortly, sir. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think it's important that also uh, to note that um, a number of uh, companies which actually pri provide private car parking are also already starting to provide electric vehicle charging stations. It's their, their acknowledgement this is where the future is in vehicles, um, and it, then they're actually going to invest uh, as a result of that. Mr Speaker, uh, I think probably the saddest part of all this uh, proposal by the Liberal Party to introduce a tax and by the Federal Liberal Party to equivocate on climate change policies has been a setback our country um, almost a decade where we could be. We led, we led the world, Mr Speaker, under Premier uh, Mike Rand uh, in terms of renewable energies. We led the nation, we led the world, and we set the standard. And for that reason, we actually are now producing uh, most of our needs, energy needs, through renewable energies. Sadly, this, this policy by the previous Liberal government and by the previous federal Liberal governments um, have done damage to that. I think with the proper settings in this state, and also at federal level that this country can actually lead not only emissions control but also in, provide innovation and also which hopefully will lead to manufacturing this type of vehicle in this country. If there's one thing we need back in this country is more manufacturing and this sort of decisive, clear message to industry will support that.